Let's come back and fight back with Maltrax The war of the minds, they want control of the masses And common core, they dumb us down in the classes Without knowledge, we can't gain access Build with the elders, take notes and write classes We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop We buy stocks, then we buy blocks Cause we know the truth and we tuned in to Dr. Maya a BB Fahodie, a BB Tumi, a BB Wan Wan. Peace to all of my thinkers, truth speakers, and truth seekers. Welcome to another Truth to Power talk with your sister, Dr. Ma'at. Thank you for joining another powerful discussion. And tonight I have with me another powerful guest, but he is no stranger to this platform. In fact, I think this may be the third or fourth time he's been on Truth to Power talk with Dr. Ma'at. I welcome you, my elder, my baba, my doctor, my okunini, my jagna. Dr. James McIntosh. How you doing tonight, Doc? I'm well, my sister. How about yourself? Thank you so much for inviting me. No, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. The last time I actually saw you, Doc, and I've been telling folks about it, was at the, uh, is it either the 36th or 37th um, uh, anniversary of CMOTAP? Was it 36 yes. or 37, 30, Doc? 30, uh, I think that was, uh, well, it was between. It, it was uh, because it wasn't an exact date. Our anniversary is in March was mm -hmm. in March. So this is 37 years now. And I think we were in November. So that made it, uh, you know, it was supposed to, it was our, it was our 37th annual celebration, yes. uh, but the anniversary didn't really occur until just yes. now. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and doc, I want to thank you for that. Um, just for the invitation, for the, um, support for the love and really the endorsement. Cause you were like, look, y'all, this is the next generation coming up. Let's, let's support this sister, you know? And so I really, appreciate you and Miss Betty Dobson, you know, just for all the hard work that you all have been putting in for, for like you said, 37, 37 years. And I, yesterday I was on IG doc and, and someone asked me, they said, well, I know that, you know, that the Jews, they had their own, you know, they had the ADL. So when someone attacks them, you know, in the media, you know, you know, they have something, you know, what do we have? And I said, we have CMOTAP. We had the committee to eliminate media offensive to African people. So I told people, I said, you got to do your research. We got our arm. We got our, we got our folks too. We have our warriors and you've been on the battlefield and, and so have your team. And like I said, Miss Betty Dobson, you all have been putting in work for over 30, over three decades or more, Doc. I say well, probably more, maybe four decades, but we appreciate you and we love you, Doc. Family, right now, take a moment out to thumb up this video. Thumb it up, thumb it up, thumb it up. Tonight, uh, Dr. McIntosh and I are going to be having a powerful discussion about Netflix, right? The, the war that we are, the war on Netflix. I call it the black war with Netflix, right? Because of this Good Times reboot family. And so we want to get this information out to the public. So please thumb up the video, share this video. If you're on Facebook, post the link. If you're on Twitter, post the link. If, oh, not Twitter, it's X. I keep saying Twitter, but it's X now. If you're on X, Post the link, right? If you're on social, any social media page, so you got Snap, you got Snapchat, you got TikTok, you got uh, X, you have Instagram, you got Facebook, all these different social media platforms. So make sure that you get the word out that we are live and supply the people with the link. Also, family, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, be sure to hit on over to Dr. Maat on YouTube and subscribe to my, my YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so that whenever I go live, you will be notified. I see the queen mothers are in the building. I see a beautiful mind, peace and love to you. A beautiful mind. That's the queen mother. She's in the building, peace and love to you. She said, this is going to be lit family. Oh yeah. You already know when Dr. McIntosh come through, he brings that fire. So peace and love to you, queen mother. I see the warrior CJ is in the building. Peace and love to you, brother CJ Young. Nice to see you, brother. I see Kazem Williams is in the building. Peace to you, Kazem. I see the great Dr. Craig Samuels is in the building. Peace and love to you, Dr. Samuels. Thank you so much for tuning in. He said, peace, Dr. Ma Dr. McIntosh in the chat. And I know some more folks will be joining us. So Dr. McIntosh. Yes, my sister. So we, so we hear about um, a Good Times reboot. And, and I think, Dr. McIntosh, initially people were excited until we knew what it was about. I think people were excited because in our culture, you know, that was a popular 
sitcom and, and you know that came out I think, I, yeah i think it was in the 70s when they released the first episode right late and 70s so, yes. late 70s and mm -hmm. so that was something that was like a staple in the black community you heard um good times the jeffersons you know all of those type of shows you know that came out and um and so when people started hearing there's going to be a reboot of good times on netflix initially folks were excited and now that i'm doing my research on this whole fiasco even the original voices or characters in the show said they were initially excited about about the reboot then we find out that the reboot is not going to include you know the the uh, the original characters i mean in a sense that they'll be like voicing for the characters but we find out that it's going to be an actual animated series right right and I watched Bernadette, who was um, the she was the character Thelma. She played the character Thelma on Good Times. But TMZ dropped a three minute. They had a three minute interview with her. And she was saying initially, Dr. McIntosh, that they the way they explained it to her was that, oh, we're going to do this reboot and it's going to be progressive. And so she said she was thinking like, well, yeah, you know, I wanted to be a nurse and and. um JJ wanted to be a surgeon or something like that. So she thought that it was going to be like in the future where they actually accomplish those goals. Right. And then the trailer dropped, Dr. McIntosh. And look at what we saw. We saw a drug dealing black baby. We saw uh, clips of a black man in a shower singing to a roach. I mean, you know, racial tropes, Dr. McIntosh, is what we saw. Yes. Tropes, yes. And stereotypes were being promoted. And so, of course, black folks are livid. People are on social media. They're going crazy. And what I said yesterday on IG, I said, I get you, black folks. I understand that you're upset. But let's galvanize and let's organize and let's get this removed. So, Dr. McIntosh, when you heard about the about good times, the reboot coming out, and then you saw the trailer, walk us through your thoughts and, and what you were thinking, you know, when they first announced we're doing a reboot and up until you saw like the actual trailer. For, uh, um, before I saw the actual trailer, well, before I saw the actual trailer, I already was not expecting anything good mm. because uh, Amos Wilson uh, told us that in a system of white supremacy, when uh, white folks create an institution, you want to know what it's about. Just take the name and turn it backwards. He said, if you want to know the... Uh, the system that's designed to cause us to be sick and to give us problems and that sort of thing, that would be the health department. If you wanna know the department that's responsible to miseducate us, that would be the education department. If you wanted to know the system that's designed to make it where you are damaged beyond repair, that would be the corrections department. And of course, we mm. know to, if you, if you wanna know the system that's for injustice, that'd be the justice department. So when you hear good times, I hear bad times. Mm. Uh, just because I've just been around for a lot of years and and uh, and know that that's how it goes when with that advice from uh, our ancestor, our brother Amos Wilson. So I wasn't expecting anything good, but I do have to say, as jaded as I am, I wasn't expecting anything as bad <laughs> as as I saw. And uh, well, I should say I had some in inkling because Brother Kwabana uh, Rasuli, you know, from the Clear the Airwaves Project, came on uh, my radio show in New York and told me about it. And he told me a lot of the things that were wrong with it. And then when I looked at it, I just saw so many other things that were wrong with it. And so the thought that came to my mind once I saw the trailer was, "This is war. This is war because when people." attack you in this blatant fashion uh, through their media, the next thing that comes is the uh, intention to exterminate you. So this is a, to me, this is a harbinger of the fascism that is getting ready to come to us. If you look at the fascism in Germany, uh, when Hitler came in, you know, it was preceded by a period of bad mouthing people that weren't Aryans, uh, for a period of time before that, even textbooks that had, you know, foul titles and 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 media itself. There was even an agency at one point that if you, if the movie wasn't uh, anti-Jewish enough, they'd send it back. So after you made a movie, you had to send it through this uh, uh, 
this agency that would take a look at it, uh, I guess you would call it a uh, censoring agency. Mm. And if they didn't find it to be bad enough, they would they would send it back and you'd have to remake it. So these are the kinds of things when, you know, before they uh, were able to wipe out so many of the indigenous people here, they had the dime store novels that were building up, you know, these people that they said were heroes because they would shoot a whole lot of Indians, Kit Carson, all that type of stuff. Uh, and then before the second, before the second period of lynching, which occurred, you know, started in uh, 1915, the second, the resurgence of the Klan, we spoke about it last time, they had Birth of a Nation. And that, that movie, which just debased us so badly, it's the harbinger of what is getting ready to come. It actually is kind of like an expression of the feelings of that majority society for the population that they've targeted. And so uh, with this, this is this is so blatant. It's not, you know, uh, really some people had problems with the old good times, but the old good times had some problems, but it had some redeeming, you know, social value. Uh, there was always a little uh, saying at the end of it, you know, that would encourage some positive values. There was a character, a young boy that was uh, ambitious and wanted to be some sort of a STEM person. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think he wanted to be a doctor. That was uh, the character played by Ralph Carter, uh, Michael oh, uh, Michael okay. Evans. Yeah, he wanted okay. to be, you know, so they were, they were redeeming social uh, values in that series. But even the people who made this originally, you know, I mean, I think that I think that they're not as vociferous as they would be because they still, you know, kind of like half careers. They still want to, you know, uh, have some something to sell in the industry. And they might feel that to attack uh, Sony's little company that made this and then uh, Netflix, which is distributing it. They might feel that that would be bad for their um, for their for the for the for their careers because mm -hmm. Hollywood is known for whiteballing people. You know, I absolutely. Mean, once they put you on that list, you never go, <laughs> you know, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. And um, I know that you're going to get into, uh, you know, why you weren't surprised because you educated me a lot, you know, on a telephone yesterday about, you know, the man behind um, the Good Times reboot. You said that, you know, because everyone's hearing, you know, Stephen Carey, Stephen Carey, Stephen Carey. You know, he's the executive producer. I don't know if he's executive or one of the producers, but you yeah. hear his name being, you know, associated with it. And so people think that this is his brainchild. And when I spoke to you on a telephone, you did some research and you said, no, 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 no. You said, and he probably don't even know, you know, and this is, we, and of course we're speculating. We don't know, but you were like, he you know, probably don't know what's, you know, what, what, what this is really about. And then you talked about the man behind um, the reboot. And you said he has a history of, 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 um, of producing films with anti-black imagery, you know, Absolutely. that he has Absolutely. a history of that. And you also mentioned that he was married to a black woman. Which... Uh, no, no, not that one. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, the person who's the head of Netflix, uh, the CEO of Netflix oh, is married to, to a black, black woman. woman. Okay. And the reason that why you might've had some confusion is because I juxtaposed the picture of him and her uh, next to one of the most disrespectful scenes uh, to black women in the in the in the in the video in the uh, in the trailer, it's in the trailer, and yeah. some, it, it could actually slip past you because it's very brief, but it is mm, definitely there. But it's there, but it's there. Okay, Doc. So I'm gonna share your um your your um your slides, okay. and so your slides are now on the screen. You have the floor, Doctor. Okay, so I just put these together just really to stimulate the conversation because we could talk about it without it, but I think a picture is worth a thousand words. Absolutely. So, of course, I call this bad times uh, at the at the instruction of my baba, my ancestor, uh, my jegna, uh, Professor Amos Wilson. I say. So this is, I told you, my first thoughts is that this is war. And so we are having a national meeting on Saturday, April the 27th on Zoom so that people from California can be there. And you can see many of the uh, 
uh, elders in our community. Uh, we have uh, attorney LeGrand Clegg. He wrote one chapter in uh, Ivan Van Sertima's book, uh, Blacks in Science. We have Dr. Malefi Asante, of course, of Afrocentricity fame, Professor Anthony Browder. Uh, we have the, the, the star on the horizon, Dr. Oya Ajwa Ma'at. We have Dr. Maulana Karinga. We have Dr. Burnett Goldman. We have Brother Omawali Clay of the December 12th movement here in New York. We have Nana Betty Dobson, myself, and Brother Kwabana are going to be um, moderating this. On the left, this is our newest addition to the panel. This is, um, uh, I, I'm sorry, her name is, uh, her last name is Evans. I think it's Karina uh, Evans. She's the daughter of the original Michael Evans who was one of the founders or of the, or one of the creators of the original uh, series. And so we, that's just, this is just information. I'll come back to that in the end, but I wanted to tell you it's war. When people attack you like this, you got to respond. And uh, this sister is in court or has been in court with them in the past because she has uh 50%, you know, she, her and her, her, her and her uh, family have 50% of the creative rights uh, on this, the uh, and you know um, they are just they're upset with this the way that Good Times has been. You can really call it identity theft. That's mm. what I call it. It's identity theft. This is not the same series by, in, by any means. In fact, the Cabrini uh, Green projects that existed at that time have been torn down, and in the last episodes of the original Jeffersons, they were supposed to be uh, moving. So that's uh, what something that Brother Quabana told me about. And certainly uh, we know that they have them uh, back in those projects, but those projects have been put on steroids. They're worse than, you know, they're worse than they were, could have ever been back in those days. So this is what the, this is what the family looked like. Oops, let's see. This is what the family looked back in the early days. You see, uh, they had to fight to get a complete black family. They had to fight with Norman Lear, you know, who wanted to present the typical image of the so-called uh, broken home that uh, Gil Nobles, um, that uh, Gil Scott Heron sang about. But after a few years, they were able to get them to put an entire family, an entire black family, on the uh, on the air even though the son was kind of a clown and the father had a great deal of difficulty finding the job and holding the job, uh, it was still at least an intact family. Uh, this is what the family looks like in the new, uh, good, uh, in the new good times, uh, which we call the bad times. That's the way I'll distinguish between the two, <laughs> <laughs> two shows. Okay. Uh, this is some of the feedback that's on the net right now from it. Everybody is saying it's terrible. <laughs> Netflix, good times, Reboot sucks. Thanks to white producers, mm. the angriest reactions that show how Netflix good times is the internet's whatever else is going to say. Black Twitter isn't done shaming new anime. So the reviews are in, and anybody black person who's any black person who saw it would, uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, pretty much uh, be disturbed unless they were disturbed, <laughs> unless the person was disturbed to start with. Then they might see it and see it as as very you know like kind of reverse. All right. That's Eric mm -hmm. Monte. He was one of the developers. And this is from an article. Uh, in fact, I took this out of an article, which is as quoting an article. The article is by Evan's daughter, or probably is by an interviewer who interviewed Evan's daughter. And he said, I had to fight and argue with Norman Lear for three years to show a complete black family on mm. television. He said during the interview, they thought of black humor as Yasa Boss. Eyes want to go down by the river. But I fight them tooth and nail. They'd ignore in the offices, take that Yasa stuff down to the cast, John Amos. He said that they would ignore him and they would take that stuff that he didn't like down to John Amos and Esther Rowland. John Amos also protested some of those things. Now, there were a bunch of shows uh, that might have been started by All in the Family. They were like spinoffs. And uh, Mike Evans was an actor. That's the young black man. Uh, and on the on the Jefferson, he was on the 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 original um, All in the Family, and he also oh. was on the on the Jeffersons. And he is the one who, along with uh, with Monty, took the idea for this um, Good Times to 
Norman Lear, who, you know, had the juice and was able to make those, uh, you know, all of those situation comedies. Okay, this is Karina Evans. I did have the name right. So this is Karina Evans. That's the same sister. Uh, this is her. Uh, she works uh, doing a lot of work uh, for uh, Black youth. Obviously, you can see that's on the continent. So this is an article. I just took the headline of an article by Shannon Dawson. You can find it very easily on the internet that she secured the rights to the show and talks the importance of the Black family on the screen. And she's uh, she's going to be on our panel on that day. She's not included in the pictures there, but I put the other picture of her on the side so that you would know she's going to be there. Beautiful. Um, so Amos Wilson said you have to turn it backwards. Sometimes you got to turn it upside down too. So as they list from top to bottom, they say it's in alphabetical order. That's their excuse. Stephen Curry, Norman Lear, Seth MacFarlane. I became suspicious because, you know, I mean, just basically, why do you have Steph Curry, a basketball player's name up at the top? How much could he have had to do with this with this film? Now, he hasn't made it any easier for himself because I understand I didn't see it. But somebody told me he was interviewed and they've asked him about it. And he he did not. He certainly did not come out and outright denounce it. He said that he wouldn't him and his family wouldn't be looking at it. But yeah, but what about our other families, uh, Brother Steph? What about our extended family? But I don't want to get stuck on him because right. self-hate will make you go get the guy that master has hole in the whip rather than master who is in control of the whip. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Right. So, right. so, but, you know, I understand. I mean, I, as I said before, everybody has to answer that had anything to do with this, but we're going first. After we so now Norman Lear, it doesn't matter how much culpability he has in it. Why? Because he's dead. So we, you know, we can't do anything to him, but Seth MacFarlane, we still have an ax to grind with him about past things that he's done and past things he's done to black people. So we're going to, Report, you know, we're going to uh, go back to that. And then you see, it, this is when they show the screen with the executive producers. You see that at the bottom, that's a, a caption, um, closed caption. Junior is repeating the 10th grade for the third time. That's something that occurred, you know, that occurs in that, in that um, trailer. Right. So basically, though, they think they can throw the rock and hide the hand that, that, that threw it. By putting Steph Curry's name up top. So just take it and re reverse it, and then you'll know who the most guilty uh, character is. This guy, uh, Seth McFarlane, has a, a history of disrespectful uh, cartoons. Uh, and at, at the same time, he also, he's, he's, you know, I mean, it's his choice. He's an atheist, and he, you know, speaks badly about religion. And it does it in the video. In the video, they have a disrespectful thing of uh, Jesus and a voice um, like um, the other comedian used to call the invisible man in the sky. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't expect that to come out of Stephen Curry. There are a lot of people that would have a problem with, you know, with that particular uh, manifestation of the divine. But Stephen Curry is definitely not coming from there. <laughs> He's coming from he was raised in a strictly Christian um, uh, uh, household, mother and father, and he's he's as an adult spoken of his gratitude that that was the way he was raised up. So I wouldn't expect him. It doesn't seem possible that he could make these images that we see. So I just reviewed it the entire, uh, and I can't say this is the entire show because I haven't seen the entire show. They may have some other messages, but in the trailer, the seven messages are, or the six messages are that one black people are ugly. Two, black people are rude, criminal, mm. and violent from infancy. Three, black people are stupid. Four, black people are rude and hypersexual. Uh, five, black people struggle is a joke. You can see that one of the numbers, <laughs> my, my, my heading got, took one of the numbers. That's why my numbers seem to be one behind. Uh, black people struggle is a joke. You know, our, our struggle for freedom is a joke. And this is a, this is a recurring theme with this guy, McFarlane. And lastly, the black people are worthless. All mm. of those sort of messages. And you could look at almost any screenshot from that uh, f from that trailer and it will fit into one of these categories. So we start out with there's a, 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 an exchange between the son and the uh, and his sister uh, in which he's calling her ugly, something about her face. And then uh, she's calling him stupid. 
And then uh, he, he says something and he says, but who the dummy now? And the father says, the father says to his children, you see what he says there, S-H-I-T, me for not wearing a condom. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the characterization, you know, see how wide the bottom of the face is and how small the head is? Yes. Know, forehead. Okay. And in the back, you see the pass due bills and stuff on. So the the grandchildren of the Jeffersons are back in the same apartment they were in when they when they moved out many many years ago. Mm. So so this is uh this is here's you got your N word. They're in the car and the young man says something about some actually says something nice I think about the daughter and the guy uh this this new Jefferson uh, no, not Jefferson I mean this new Evan says uh Gray who is this N word I'm about to kill. So again disrespect mm. this is school this is the dialogue they show you the high school and it says uh they say junior is repeating the 10th grade and the mother's asking the the teacher the teacher so in other words like there's no there's not even any bougies in here with different uh <laughs> you know with different language they have the teacher she says the first thing she says and I did the first thing went past me the first time I saw it. The part I heard was take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. But it makes more sense because the first thing she asked the teacher now, this is the teacher talking about one of the children, one of the students. Do you do you ha uh, do you do all fans? Now, all fans is, uh, you know, I tried. To, I thought it might be a slang. I looked in the Urban Dictionary to see what it is. It turns out it's a website where people put porn. So they put porn, you know, in other words, individuals, not not big movie companies. They can make right. their own porn. They go to this website and then they can sell it to other people mm -hmm. uh, through that website. So the teacher and when he, you're saying, what can my what can we do to help my son in school? Because he's fit, got been left back three times. She's saying, do you do all fans? And then in case you missed it, she says, take off your shoes and let me see what kind of feet you're working with. That's what she's saying to the boy, a student in her. See, this is vile. Uh, it's weird and it's vile. The B word. She's walking down the street and a compliment from some people on the street is, you know, B, you look like money. Mm. So here's a little, this is another, this is, this is very, it's just sick all the way through. I told you hypersexuality throughout. Now, even though, you know, he's saying, man, my mouth's ready for some milk right now. This is a baby. This is the drug dealing uh, baby in the, uh, in the, in the, in the split. You see that they have a woman dressed uh, voluptuously, you know, in a way, or, or I should say um, uh, revealingly. And he's saying, man, my mouth's ready for some milk right now. It's clearly a, in the next slide, the person or not the next slide, the next uh, dialogue, the person talking about him being breast obsessed. So they're definitely sexualized and breastfeeding. This is the the uh, sacrilegious stuff uh, for Christians, you know, uh, might not be sacrilegious for many uh, of, of us, but it is, you know, when you look at it, it's very disrespectful. Uh, uh, you have him saying sun is for you he's sitting on a cloud up in the sky and they're talking about a new cell phone who this that's what that's what uh the jesus character says so that's not steph curry <laughs> steph, not, i mean I, I i could you know um christian people they, they they couldn't even say the name jesus without it being in some respectful mm -hmm. manner usually so i'm only looking analyzing it not from the standpoint of promoting christianity but from the standpoint of saying well who's behind this it doesn't seem likely to me that it's Steph Curry, even though they have his name on the top. It's a, as I said before, it's a false flag operation. It's identity theft. It's all the way through. They're, 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 make, they're pretending that it was good times. It's nothing like that original series. And then in terms of the attribution as to who did it, they take it and put the black man's name on top. And uh, the real culprit, uh, the, a black man, a dead man, and then the real culprit on the bottom so this is a little bit from his biography you know he's been drawn since he was uh two years old he was drawn woody woodpecker characters he when he studied animation at the rhode island school of design I, that's the part of his you know biography that i think is important he also is like a singer and 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 something else one of his uh local one of the people at the school he went to a priest at the school he went to 
uh, really used to write bad letters against him all the time because he felt that McFarlane was poking at uh, some actual live people who were at uh, his school. McFarlane uh, denied that. These are some images from his from McFarlane's uh, series Family Guy. So you could see the type of racial uh, obsession he has. And this this was full with stomping and beating and all that kind of stuff like that. These are all from Family Guy. This is a a, a person who's freeing uh, freeing an enslaved African, and he's asking him, "But we cool now, right?" Something along those lines. Uh, but all of those are Seth. That's just background of Seth MacFarlane, so that you realize this is more like Seth MacFarlane than anyone else on that list. Turn the name backwards. The agency responsible for making us sick, the health department. The agency responsible for mass incorporating us, that'd be the Justice Department. Agency responsible for damaging us beyond repair, the corrections department. So that means that good times equals bad times. This is uh, the CEO, Ted Sarandos. Uh, he's not a racist, right? Because he has a black wife. I don't know if that follows, huh? So anyway, that's him and his wife on the left. This is a still shot. Notice the way the black man is. Look, look at that silhouette. What does that look mm. like? What's mm. it look like? Now, I mean, I don't want to put a thoughts. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. I see what it, I see what it but, looks like. Yeah. Asking, what does he look like? What does the the face of the man look like? Oh my goodness! It it looks it looks over exaggerated or what they, what they absolutely yeah, yeah, it's like a character. It's actually right. the same one they would use for a uh, ape. That's the same mm. face they would use for an ape. And this is, uh, of course, in motion. People that want to see it on that trailer, it's at point two oh three on the on the uh, on the trailer, and he's bucking, and her head is bobbing, and he's slapping her on the behind, and the dog is looking bug-eyed uh, in that screen. This is mm -hmm. this is not subtle stuff right here this is pure insulting now this is mcfarlane very from the past very this insulting. is mcfarlane he says that this is gwyneth pa this is uh, harriet tubman he these are his words harriet tubman doing gwyneth paltrow now why he picks harriet tubman to be the butt of his job i have no idea gwyneth paltrow for people who don't know her She's this actress that they usually put in roles where it looks like butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. But she had a brand of candles that she sold called Smells Like My Vagina. You can look it up on Google. Just Google it. Uh, I understand they flew off the shelves. And this is us again. This is why it's war. Uh, I want everybody who's listening today, please tune into the Zoom because it's not enough to express outrage verbally. We have to do something. Exactly. Exactly played a recent speech of Martin Luther King where he said, you know, in addition to all the other actions we take, you know, and he was killed the day after this, by the way, he mm. more or less said, we have to, we have to ha take economic sanctions against anybody in connection with the things that we do. So that in other words, and as you're, uh, this was when he was with the garbage man strike or the sanitation worker strike in, uh, in Memphis. And he said, we need to boycott uh, seal test milk. We need to boycott Wonder Bread and so on and so forth. He named a few companies. That was on April 3rd of that year. The following day, he was assassinated. Mm. But we have to do this. We have to. Uh, that's, um, yeah, uh, the speech has a name I can't recall right now, but mountaintop speech the mountaintop speech. yeah i've been to them i've been to the mountaintop, been, been to yeah, the mountaintop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they like to quote that part to us but the real part of it is when he's you know the part that that i think was most um uh telling the part that was most important was saying that we have to withdraw our dollars he he goes to a whole he doesn't just say that now he goes and tells you how much money black people spend or how much money they have and equates that with real power. He said, if we'll, if we'll unite and use that money in a particular way, he actually talks about creating black institutions. He tells you to take your money, put it in the black bank. This is Martin Luther King now, and this is many, many years ago. And uh, I still don't think we followed uh, that advice, but we are coming together. We got people from around the country. And what we're going to be talking about is what types of things can be done. And I want to encourage people, you can look at the trailer. The trailer is free. Don't 
uh, don't buy it on Netflix. Uh, you know, uh, now you say, how can I look at it? With, I, I don't know exactly how you could look at it, but I hear people from all around the country talking about how they get bootleg uh, videos and that sort of thing like that. So obviously that would be one kind of a way that a person could look at it. Some people are looking at it in bootleg, but don't, don't go on Netflix and look at the video. Um, so we're going to be there and we're going to have a, a bunch of actions that we're going to ask people to take. And we're going to try to get, you know, our elders and, and dignitaries are going to be encouraging us to take an action. I mean, it's, it's very simple. I mean, we, you need to cancel your Netflix. Come on, come you on. Need, that. Yeah, yeah. You need to cancel your Netflix. Uh, you need boycott Netflix. You need to encourage others. Everybody go and you get somebody else to also do it. And at the same time, you got to write them, tell them why you canceled it. You got to sign the petitions uh, that are out. And then if for emphasis, in order to, uh, you know, for people to see it and know that it's happening, we may be having demonstrations. It was al already one that was held in Los Angeles. I have to say it was not well attended. And, mm. uh, you know, we don't want that. We want to have... Uh, a massive action because that's, that's right. the only thing that's going to be effective. Now, I tell you, if you don't do it today around, don't try to demonstrate after they start putting you in the camps. That's not going to work. Under fascism, you're not going to be able to go out there and demonstrate and yell. Uh, and fascism is a very real uh, possibility. Some people would say probability for the American government, given the climate where we have two different realities in different parts in the country. Mm. You know, one part of the country that sees Trump is persecuted and another part that sees him as a criminal. Uh, you know, so we, we really dealing with alternate realities here. And the alternate reality that, that you can have is going to be fascism. So, oh, I guess that's the end of it. Okay, I didn't even realize that's my last slide. So, and yeah, 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 Doc, I'll um, stop. I'll stop. I'll remove it and stop. Um, let me let me see if I can do this. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to do that. It's going to take you away. Um, so just just exit out and get back to me doc when you you know but i do okay. want to say something okay. while you're doing that um, sure because I, I did remove your slide from the screen so you're back you know we can see you you're back you're back I on the screen see you now are we good okay yeah okay. yeah yeah we're, we're good but um what was i getting ready to say dr mcintosh i just want to salute some folks who are on instagram after they watched your presentation they said they just canceled their netflix so i do want to salute some folks um, I'm scrolling through, so I may not be able to see your name, but I saw someone by the name of Cyrell, um, the original. And uh, Cyrell was just like, yeah, I just canceled mine. Um, Nurse 5-1 was just like, yeah, I just canceled mine. So it, it's folks right now, and I'm looking at you in the chat. You're like, yeah, I just canceled mine. And, and that's what we got to be about, you know, Dr. McIntosh action. Someone in the chat said, oh, well, I'm I'm tired of the we always meeting these meetings and conferences. And I responded to them in the chat. I said, well, we have to meet in order to plan, organize, and execute. Sorry, plan, organize, and execute, right? You can't plan, organize, and execute unless you meet. So yes, this is not going to be a meeting. And this is what Dr. McIntosh just finished saying. Yeah. We're not just talking. This is a meeting to plan. What is Absolutely. the next course of action? The key word is action. So we're going to be discussing action items at this meeting. So if you all are serious, if you all are serious about this, make sure that you're in the meeting. And like Doc said, we don't, if we, we're not coming to talk. We, we are coming to talk, but we're talking mm -hmm. about action items, right? Exactly. And exactly. so once, once we lay that out, people will walk away with marching orders and that's what we're going to do. Okay. That's what we're going to do. We're going to follow through with that family. So it's not, I don't want you to think that we just getting together and letting off steam. Socializing. No. Yeah, yeah, we're not yeah. socializing. Venting. This is, yeah, this venting, this is real what we're talking about, you know. And so make sure that you're there so that you get the, um, you know, you get the 411, you get the information, you take it away, bring it back to your family, take it back to your community, your church, your mosque, your spiritual center, wherever, right? Spread the word with these action items so we can get this removed from Netflix. And also, Dr. McIntosh, another thing that you talked about, which was very powerful, everything that you mm -hmm. said was powerful, mm -hmm. when you talked about Dr. King and he talked about economic sanctions, that's what we had to understand. People pay attention to your money. They don't want to hear, people don't pay attention when you're doing this. They pay attention to the money. 
And so and Dr. Davis Wilson also talked about following the money, following the money, following the money. And so it's important that we do things like cancel our subscription, right? It's important that we do things like don't go to Netflix and click on it because a lot of brothers and sisters on the internet said, Doc, I watched the first episode of it and I couldn't get through it. And I said, well, why did you click it? Because when you click on it, it gives Netflix, it gives this show a view. What views lead to what? Increased ratings. Increased ratings mean or it signifies a like or support for something. So when they don't see the ratings, if they don't see the high ratings, they're going to say, man, we can't do another season of this. Nobody watched it. No one's clicking on it. So brothers and sisters, please don't click. Please don't click on the on the show. Don't go to Netflix and click on the show because you're basically telling Netflix, I like it. I like this. Give me some more. Right. So don't click on it. I'm with Dr. McIntosh a thousand percent. If you really want to watch it, go through some other avenues to get it right. But don't go to Netflix and watch it because what you're going to tell Netflix is that you like it, that you support it and that you want more of it. Right. So Netflix will come to us and say, well, you all are talking about uh, it's offensive to black people. But look at the ratings. Uh, uh, 75 percent of our ratings, you know, are from black people. And so family. Let's make sure that we don't support this. Doc, did you want to add something else? Yeah, I, I, a, a couple of, a, a couple of things. I want to tell you who CEMOTAP is. I mean, not because we're just talking about CEMOTAP, but see, we're not, these aren't experiments we're doing with you. We um, went church by church in New York, and we reduced the circulation of a newspaper called the New York Post by 200,000. They went bankrupt. Now, the paper is still in existence, but it's under, in existence under new ownership. Mm. That ownership went bankrupt. And uh, this was documented by Wilbur Tatum in the Amsterdam News and Earl Corwell. And it was actually, yeah, in, in one of Earl Corwell's articles who wrote for the Daily News. So that's Earl Corwell is the journalist who wrote a story about the Black Panthers, the FBI, demanded his sources and he refused. They told him they were going to arrest him and he still a few refused. And years later, this is um, what he wrote about CEMOTAP. So mm -hmm. we're not, uh, and, and, and you know, this isn't a, there's, there's going to be both an educational part of this forum and an action plan of this forum. We're going to come there. It's not like we're going to come there. We're going to come there listening to everybody but we will come there with our own recommendations. And uh, if people, and we always leave time at the end for the community to give us feedback. But we want to do, don't just withdraw. Now that, I think I want to take my hat off to those people that told you they just canceled their Netflix. I really respect you. But mm -hmm. now also write them and tell them why you, um, why you cancel your, your, your subscription because one letter they know represents at least 50 or more people out here in the community because most people won't take the time to do it. Right, and absolutely. Sign the petition, sign them all. Sign everyone that's saying cancel, sign everyone that's saying boycott, uh, sign everyone that's, that's expressing your anger towards uh, Netflix. And if you belong to an organization, the black nurses, the the black psychologists, the black uh, whatever, barbers, whatever, to get your organization to issue a statement or a letter that uh, expresses their dissatisfaction with this particular uh, with this particular movie. Wherever you can, whatever form you have, like Dr. Maat said, your synagogue, your church, your mosque, your temple, whatever it is, uh, get tell others and because it's not like CEMOTAP is doing CEMOTAP never bankrupted anybody our community bankrupted them at our urging Doc I'm over here laughing right and yes. uh, this brother came in shout out to brother Kit Logan he got it he said I just threw my TV in the trash he's so <laughs> <laughs> That's why I started chuckling. I said he would come here and say something like that he said I just threw my he said I I, threw, I just threw my TV in the trash. He is so simple. But yeah, if we, we got to, you know, and, and absolutely. And, and Doc, another thing that I, you know, when I do speak, um, because, you know, when I do speak on the panel, I really want to talk about the just the importance and the necessity of Black people controlling our images, controlling our imagery, controlling our, our narratives, controlling our 
culture, you know, all of that, Doc. You know, I'm sitting here thinking about Dr. Wade Nobles, who said that um, power is the ability to define reality and have other people accept your definition as their own, right? And so when you think about reality and how people define reality, you define reality through imagery, words, right? Stories, you know, all kinds of things. Media shapes our reality, right? And so Dr. Leonard Jeffries, there's a quote, and I just want to see if I can share it. Let me see. It. Here it is. Dr. Leonard Jeffries, and, and peace be upon him, that elder, he said, whoever controls the images controls your self-esteem, self-respect, and self-development, right? So let's pause there, Dr. McIntosh. Whoever controls the imagery, they control your self-esteem, how you feel about yourself. Is it healthy? Do you feel confident? How do you feel? Do you feel positive? You have positive self-imagery? They control all of that when they control the imagery. They control your self-respect and your self-development. Think about, I think right now, Dr. McIntosh, I know we're outraged about how black people are being depicted. Think about how that's going to impact the psyche, not only of us, but particularly our children, Doc. What kind of impact would that have on a black child, especially when I looked at the PowerPoint slide that you had up of the black mother sitting there with her um, child and they're talking to the teacher and the teacher is basically like, get on the net and sell porn because we can't, you can't learn. How do you think that affects the self-esteem of black children who are already combating feelings of inferiority? They're already combating feel feelings of inferiority. How do I know? The, the doll test was repeated in 2005 and they got the same, same results, results, Doc. They got yeah. the same results. Yes. The black doll is ugly. The black doll is stupid. The black doll can't learn. Now to add insult to injury, we're going to sit our children in front of Netflix and allow them to watch Good Times, which, which, which reinforces or affirms these negative racial stereotypes. How do you think that's going to impact the psyche of black people, particularly black children? How about so, you? Go I'm ahead, sorry, No, no, no. no go ahead. No, please go. Please. Okay. How do you think it's going to affect your enemies? You got people from 15,000 miles away that think they know about black people because this imagery which circulates around the world. People, people get this and they think they know what black people, they come here hating you. They come here knowing the N-word because of the images they've seen. And sometimes they, even when they're trying to be friendly, they start acting like those caricatures of black people on TV, uh, thinking that that's the way uh, that you are. So it's, it's, it, it, it affects us directly ourselves and it affects us externally with the people we have to interact with. Because around the world, we are projected as the buffoons, the criminals. Come on. The, I, I mean, it, 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 everything you know and and we can see that it's having an impact because of how we try to change who we are you know our people go under the knife you should see how much cosmetic surgery we, we do you should see how many beauty products we buy because mm. we just don't feel good we just you know we just want to see something else other than what that screen has projected as being so terrible and you see the impact that cartoons had on Seth McFarlane mm -hmm. at two. Mm -hmm. He started drawing Woody Woodpecker. So the cigarette people use it. They made Joe Camel. When you do it in an animation, that makes children think that it's for them. And then when they see the black father cursing his child out and saying those things about saying that he should have had a worn a condom. They, mm. You know, these are the they they save black people are the toilet for white people's most debased ideas and concepts mm. you use for that in their media they use you for that the things that they think the worst about that they feel the worst about they make that character you in the movies mm. and it's 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 uh it's it's really it's something but again we don't want to just uh you know i definitely don't want to just keep lamenting this stuff we got to we got to take action. And I'm telling you, CMOTAP will take action and we just want other organizations. We if if we don't come to see these people, then I don't know how to attract you. 
Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely not. The, absolutely. The founder of Kwanzaa is going to be there. The founder of Afrocentricity is going to be there. I share. Uh, the brother that wrote the Browder Files is going to be there. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Dr. Like, Mahat is going to be there. You know, in fact, you say we got a lineup. We got a lineup. We got know? a lineup. And, and they, and they aren't going to just tell you to, to I mean, they're going to give you some knowledge at the same time. You know, if you need some more knowledge, too, they're going to give you some. And we do. We all need it. Uh, so uh, I thank you for this opportunity to tell you our case. But don't you want to see this, the person who actually owns the intellectual property rights to this thing? Mm -hmm. And she's mm -hmm. fighting them now. She's fighting them now. There's a, a, a nice article that, uh, you know, about her fight uh, that you can find again. Just Google it. Uh, uh, Evans, C. Evans. Evans. C. Yes. Evans. I'll make sure I do that. Uh, Doc, before 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 I get on the panel with with, with her, because I I just wanna you know like you said do my little do my due diligence. Absolutely. And so like you said, so she engaged right now in the battle because she owned the, the intellectual you know property rights. Right, and know, and wow. they're totally disregarding them. I mean, they used the name Good Times. They used the name Evans because understand the characters in Good Times were named after her father. Wow. The most conscious character on that show was the little boy, Michael. I think he wanted to grow up to be a neurosurgeon or something. That's her father's name, Mike Evans. Now he passed and um, the other one, uh, Monty is in uh, you know bad, bad condition. He's seriously ill. Mm, mm, mm. And it's the same thing with the music industry, how they stole, stole our stuff. They stole these things. What did Norman Lear know about these things? He didn't know anything about it. They brought these concepts to him. And then, of course, he takes them and distorts them, you know, to fit his conscious or unconscious racism. Facts. You know? Right, right. Facts, Doc. Facts. Well, we're going to be in the building, family. The Ma the Maanian family, they're going to pull up. I'm going to be posting the flyer everywhere, Dr. McIntosh. And they'll definitely, the Maanian family will definitely, definitely be in the building. Doc, let me drop a bomb for you. Fire! 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 That was fire, Dr. McIntosh. That was fire. Thank do you, you have I, any closing words for the listening yeah, audience? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. One more thing I wanted to say. Uh, in that speech, Dr. King, when he's talking about the economic sanctions, he's talking about the same thing Marcus Garvey said, unity, unity. When we come to this meeting, let's come there trying to see what we can agree on. If we start talking religion, we can disagree on that. If we start talking uh uh, voting and not, but we can disagree. That, that, we're not trying to talk about the stuff that we disagree on. I we want to talk about what we can do together to stop this attack. Whatever this is, if you're a bougie, if you're a Marxist, if you're if you're if you're a nationalist, whatever it is, this this hurts all of us. Facts. This hurts every single black person. So we ought to be able to at least unite on an action to defend ourselves against that. Absolutely, Doc. I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. So, Dr. McIntosh, I will see you on the 27th. Yes. And, you know, you and I, we know, we'll talk before then. Hopefully we'll talk before Great. then. Great. And, and hold up. Hold up, Doc. Your birthday in a couple of days. Right. Yes, that's right. I'm I, if, if, I, if I'll right wish blesses me. I'm going to hit number 76 in four days. Really I say, yeah. I say. Well, happy birthday, Doc. I, if Thank I don't you. speak to you, happy birthday. And I wish you many, many more. Again, Thank we you appreciate much. you, Dr. McIntosh. Peace appreciate and love. You too. Peace and love. All right, family. You heard from our great scholar, elder, Baba, Dr. Jegna, Uncle Nini, Dr. McIntosh. He dropped a lot of great information. Every time I engage him, every time I even, you know, speak to him, I always walk away learning something. He is just when I say a wealth of information, I mean, he's just, a, he's like a walking library. He could tell you everything that was going on, what it was going on, what happened. And I'm sitting there like a little kid, just listening to him. I'm telling you, it's just always um, an honor and a pleasure um, just engaging with him and learning with him. Family, I'm going to show the flyer one more time. I know that he showed the flyer. Okay. Be in the building family. Make sure that you're in the building. Let's show up and show out why. Look at this. Why and how we must respond to Netflix. Okay? 
It's going down family Saturday, April 27th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. via Zoom. Here is the Zoom meeting ID. And this is the password, the passcode. I'm sorry. Make sure that you're in the building family. Okay. And again, we're not just talking just to be talking, right? Like with this is, we're going to be talking action items. So it's not like you're going to leave and, oh, woe is me. And we're just letting off steam. We're going to be talking action items. What are we, what can we do and what should we do? And what will we do? I say, all right, family. So before we head out of here, you know, I got a plug. The UACI Summer STEM Camp, all right? We already have the registration up. It's going down July the, here it is, July the 8th through July the 19th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This camp will be virtual. We plan on uh, mailing out laptops and a STEM kit for your child to participate. Children between the ages of 8 and 16. Uh, that is our target target uh, population. But if there's a mature seven year old or someone who is 17 who wants to join, of course, we're not going to turn that Watoto, that child away. All right. But we only have 30 slots. OK. And so and slots are already <laughs> filling up family. OK. You might say, well, Doc, if it's virtual, why you only have 30 slots? Because we have four instructors. OK. And we want to make sure we give our children, you know, an impactful and also an intimate learning experience. We don't want a hundred people on, you know, we want four instructors and to 30 students, right? So that kind of, you know, it, that's a good balance. All right. And so just make sure that you enroll, enroll, enroll. Also family, hold on, let me go to this last one. The Asafo training camp, the Asafo training camp happening on the last, we're going to start the last Sunday of July. Registration is open. All right. Registration is open. It says this camp focuses on manhood development and African-American boys between the ages of 12 and 14. This is a collaborative effort between Ed Enemy Productions and the Urban Youth Initiative Project. Now, I do actually have, you know, a little video for you to watch. It's like one minute. I just want to show you all how powerful, how powerful this camp is. But hold on. Here we go. Let me take it from the top. I say who we, we say Sapo, who we, who we, your goal is to become like the customer. You want to be prepared, you're going to do some push ups. You are going to do some push ups this entire week. You're going to do some money this entire week. You're going to learn, you're going to have some fun, you're going to do some self this entire week. You're going to learn some survival skills this entire week. You're going to learn some survival skills this entire week. And what I witnessed was men pouring into our future men because orange sharpens iron Ashe? it's gonna be a packed week nine to five so family head on over to uaci stem camp.com let me put that in the chat 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 uaci stem camp stem camp Dot com. I'm putting it in the chat and I'm going to put it on the screen. All right. This is the STEM camp. And then if you are interested, again, it's a virtual camp. If you're interested in the Asafo training camp, visit asafocamp.com. All right. I just dropped both of those links in the chat. Look at it on the screen. This is asafocamp.com. Space is limited. I think for the Asafo camp, we only have 20 slots. Okay, 20 slots. This camp is completely free. 20 slots. All right. So make sure that you enroll your son as soon as possible. Also, if you're not in the DMV area, family, don't worry about it. I've had parents who came from New York. Matter of fact, two of them came down from New York, enrolled their child, stayed with their son the entire week in Baltimore. So if you're not in the DMV area, come kicking in Baltimore for a week while your son matriculates through the program. I say. Ashe. So family, I am going to let you go. I appreciate you all tuning in. Tuning in. I don't take it lightly because guess what? You could have been anywhere in these social media streets, right? But you were right here with Dr. Ma'at. So I appreciate your time and I appreciate your mind, right? Opening your mind to what I had to say and to what Dr. McIntosh had to say. So I appreciate your time. 
I appreciate your mind. I will be back on tomorrow, family, at 3 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I got Judge Joe Brown coming on because we're going to be talking about O.J. Simpson and what really went down at the O.J. Simpson trial, right? Not the stuff you may saw on TV and the evidence that, you know, the propaganda that the media was circulating. We're going to talk about what really went down tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're at work, just watch it later on. If you can catch it live, please do. Shout out to everyone on YouTube watching and shout out to my IG family. I see you. Peace and black power. Now let me find my daggone brand. Here we go, y'all. In <laughs> my outro. Let's combat and fight back with Maltrax. The war of the minds, they want control of the masses. And common core, they dumb us down in the classes. Without knowledge, we can't gain access. Build with the elders, take notes and write classes. We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop. Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop. We buy stocks, then we buy blocks. Cause we know the truth, and we tuned in the doctor. The Maya, see the love.